planes, they're all around us and they come with an abundance of data. But how can we look at them in a little bit more detail? Over the next few minutes, we're going to look at how to find out what is flying around us. And if we have a plane on a satellite image, how can we find out what type of plane is it? What airline is it? And where is it going? We're also going to look at how to find out what's the name of this plane that was destroyed at the main airport in Sudan's Khartoum. Let's take a look at answering some of those questions. Hi everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part 18, so let's get started. First, I want to take you over to the inspiration for doing this video. It actually came from a flight tracker called Gerdion, who's on Twitter here and specializes in tracking flights and planes and any objects that may appear in the sky. Gerdion actually sent me this video from a YouTuber called Planes, Trains and Everything. And he came across this plane that's actually caught on Google Maps or seen on Google Earth as well. We can see it here. I was looking on Google Satellite and this is what I found. You can clearly see the horseshoe curve but you can also see an aircraft flying overhead as well which I think is really cool. Gerdion thought how about we start to look up what airline is it and where is it going? Well if we have a look at the date of the satellite image that's usually a good point to start with. Let's identify the time that this flight might have been flying over this location. If we have a look at the date, we can see that it's on the 13th of April, 2020. Now, thankfully, if we wanted to have a look at the specific time that was going, well, it's not really here, but we can use something called Apollo Mapping. Apollo Mapping is a third party retailer of satellite imagery. So what we can do is we can put in our coordinates and we can have a look at available satellite images from that day. Obviously, because I'm looking at Google Earth, I want to make sure that I have Maxar available and maybe some of the others just to keep my search field open. We remember that the satellite image was taken on the 13th of April 2020. So I'm going to scroll down to that date. Here we are. We have a satellite image from 13th of April 2020. Now we won't be able to view this image entirely because this is a third party reseller. If we have a look carefully, we may be able to see the flight path on this plane right here. I think we can see that right across there. But what this tells us is that that plane was caught on a satellite image flying over at 11.34 UTC time. Now this is useful because we have the date, we have the time and we have the location. And we can use something called Flight Radar. Flight Radar 24 is a flight tracking system. And it allows you to look at current, but also past flights from anywhere in the world of commercial airlines. Flight Radar 24 is one of the few tools that I will show that actually costs money. I'm not getting any commission for this, but they have different packages you can purchase, basic, silver, gold, and business. I use the gold subscription. For me, that's affordable because I do this work all the time. However, you can still get away with a lot using basic or even silver as well. Because this flight was in 2020, it goes past my subscription. And I don't want to show you because I don't want you to have to sign up to the most expensive subscription of business. So what we're going to do is use some other examples but I wanted to show you how to go through those steps of looking at the satellite imagery. And you can use this with any flights that you may identify on satellite imagery, any pictures of planes as well, where you've taken a photo of a plane and you wanna know where it's going. You can do the exact same process. Photos, satellite images, videos, news articles, you can look at them all in that aspect. So the place that we're going to go to, to start this tutorial off, is Heathrow Airport in London. 
I've been to Heathrow Airport a lot. It's a very busy airport. So I thought this might be a good way to identify some planes on the tarmac and use them as a case study to identify where they might be headed. So if we have a look at Heathrow, uh, I have a satellite image from July 2022. And look, we have a plane taking off. We can see uh, it's slightly curved upwards and we can see that it's moving quite fast uh, because of that red, green, blue that's been left behind there from the shutter. So we can see that that's slowly taking off. So we have the questions. What type of plane is it? What model is it? What airline is it? And where is it going? So let's take a look by going through the exact same steps we just looked at before. Okay, so we have a satellite image and we have a date, but we need to know the time. So we go back to Apollo mapping. This time on Apollo mapping, I'm just going to search for Heathrow Airport. Our satellite date is July 2022. Specifically, because I've clicked on the plus icon, it will give me the day. So we're looking at July 11, 2022 on this satellite image. Now we have three July 11s here, 2022. I think the satellite image on Google Earth is probably 30 centimeters since it's quite a, a clear satellite image. We can even see some stripes on the tail fin and maybe something up near the cockpit here. So I'm gonna say it's one of these two. How do we check? Well, we can load the image. You can see if maybe we could possibly see the plane on the tarmac. Now, this might seem like quite a blurry preview image, but we can see a couple of things. First of all, there's a white little indicator up on there where we have this runway here. This is in a different location to that one. So maybe let's try the other image. So we have two images here and we can see there's a white piece there and a white piece there. So it seems like it's captured two planes, but they're both at different times. The plane that we want is the one that's kind of back towards this bit. So if we count the circles that we have here, the grass circles, one, two, three. Well, we've got one that's kind of out of that. And then we have one that's one, two, three, back here. Perfect, that's our image. So now we're gonna have a look at what time that was taken. It was taken at 10.56 UTC time. That's really helpful because now I can go to Flight Radar. Now, just to remind you, I have a gold subscription, which allows me to look back one year on Flight Radar. So the way I'm gonna do that is by first going to Heathrow. I'm gonna zoom in to that location. And as you can see, Heathrow is quite a busy little airport with lots of little planes around there. But I'm gonna go back to my date which if we have a look at Apollo mapping was July 11, 2022 at 10.55. So 2022, July, and we're going to go July 11, and I'm going to go time UTC. So remember it's 10.55. So I'm gonna choose 10.50, start playback. I'm gonna hit pause straight away. And we can see there's a plane on the runway there. If I go back a little bit, 10.53, so we have one at 10.53, but this image was 10.55.36. So let's play it forward a bit more. 10.55, now what was the second on that? We have uh, 10.55.36, that's 57, so let's go back a little bit more. So 10.55, so this will be our plane. So what we have is the time of July 11, 2022, 10.55 UTC, July 11, 10.55 UTC. So we have a plane, BAW778. This is the cool thing about flight radar is it also brings in a lot of details about these planes. You can have a deeper look at some of these planes. So this plane is a British Airways A320-251N. That's helpful to know. We've got this satellite image here. Let's have a look at some things. So we've got these kind of stripes on the back. 
Or this has stripes. It's got something on the front near the cockpit. We have a bit near the cockpit there. It's got the side engines as well. So let's have a look at um, an actual Airbus A320N. We can go to the breakdown of what Airbus A320s look like. And we can specifically go down to the A320N here and start having a look at some close-up details as to what they look like. This is the Airbus A320 and we can have a look a little bit closer. So we can see that there's the engines on the side there. Well, that's pretty correct there. It's got those, those wing shapes there like this. So that's a pretty nice way. It's even got the tipped wings. We can see those. So it's a nice way that we can just do a visual match as well to see if we're correct. Another way we can also do that is that we have a plane on the tarmac so we can measure it as well. So we have the wingspan here, which is 35.8 meters. What I'm going to do is measure from tip to tip. And it looks like we might have about 35.8 meters. Of course, that might be not exact, but that looks pretty, pretty accurate there. We can have a look at the length. So it's 35.75 meters. So we'll have a look at the length here. I'm going to go from the front here. So I've got about 39. That may be the bending of an image, or it may be because this is higher than this bit. So on a satellite image, it's not equal. Uh, there could be a couple of different reasons for that as well. So there's a couple of things that we can look at there, right? Now, if we wanted to have a look at perhaps where that flight was going, well, we can do that too. So if we go back to our flight radar, we know that this is BAW, and what we can do is check that entire flight. So we know that this is registration, this is BA778. So we could even do a search for that flight specifically. British Airways 778. And we can see that there seems to be a regular flight. Um, if we scroll back down to the bottom, uh, our flight was on July 11. July 11, here we are. London to Stockholm. So all these flights to London to Stockholm. And we can even download. Uh, so we could either play that and play that entire flight to see where it went and how long the flight took its path. And we can also actually take that flight from here. So July 11, we can download a KML and we can open that KML up into Google Earth to see the exact flight path. And this is quite useful if you are, for example, sitting on your own flight and you see a location and you wanna know where you've flown over or what that interesting building was or what you saw on the flight or even just as you're about to land and you flew over a nice piece of a hiking area or a sport oval or some other building that you're quite curious about, you can see the flight plan like that. So those are just some ways that we can answer so many questions just from that simple satellite image that we saw before of a plane taking off from Heathrow. So what if we have a plane on a tarmac that we want to identify that might have been destroyed? Well, here's a satellite image from Planet, which was taken on the 24th of April. And we can see what is clearly a number of destroyed planes, specifically a large one that is located right here. Now, the plane's not about to take off, so it's not going to be active as a current flight, but rather it's just parked there. The reason why this plane was destroyed was due to clashes in the city in Sudan between the Sudanese military and the RSF or Rapid Support Forces. And we wanna specifically identify what was that plane, what airline did it belong to, and what type of model it might've been. We can also see some of the destruction from April 19 before it. So it's been destroyed for a few days since that satellite image. This is from Planet Satellite Imagery. It is a commercial satellite imagery organization that often publishes this sort of stuff for free uh, online as well. Uh, and they surface that through news articles 
or they send that out to those that regularly look at this satellite imagery. So first of all, let's maybe head to Khartoum on Google Earth. Now we know that was the airport and interestingly enough, we've got a number of satellite images where there is a plane in the same location. And it seems like the same type of planes that are always present in that specific location. This might be because they are a certain type of large plane. They appear to be different to many of the others. So they appear to be larger than these. We also have a number of planes that often park down here as well but they don't appear to be the same size as these large ones. Let's see what sort of details we can pick out of this. So we'll go to Khartoum, Khartoum International Airport. We'll show it on the map. We'll zoom in and see if we can identify what's happening there. So we'll click on there. There's obviously no planes taking off uh, at the moment. There are considerable clashes still in the area and still destroyed planes on the tarmac. What we can do is perhaps have a look at whether there have been departures from Khartoum Airport. A useful thing about flight radar is that we're also able to find out arriving flights, departing flights, and we're able to search for that as well. But we're also able to have a look at this section called more. And this opens up a lot of details about what's actually available to see. So we can see arrivals, uh, these are scheduled arrivals, but they probably won't be coming in because of the uh, damage to the airport. The, we can see departures as well. These are scheduled. We can also see what might be on the ground as well. Um, so we can see that there's a few different airlines that are on the ground. So we see the UN is there and we can have a specific look at some of the details there, right? So we can see the flight from the UN where it may have come into and where it may have gone into. So we know that this plane might be a UN plane. And we can see some of those other planes that would have come in as well. So it seems like what we're looking for is quite a large plane, for this one specifically. Uh, it was a very similar plane. They seem to use the, the little side steps as well that we can see with a lot of these ones that they've been using. And it looks like it might have been a large plane in that location. Um, very similar to what we see here as well. So we have an A330 there as well, which is quite a large plane. And we can have a look at if uh, that track matches up. So let's have a look at maybe where it came into. So it, this one came from Riyadh. And let's have a look at the final destination of this flight. So we know that it went up in this kind of area and the end of that track was up towards here. So we don't have a final location of that, but we do know that this flight SB459 came off in this section and may have come up here. And that, that A330 is quite a large plane. So how can we tell some more details? So there doesn't appear to be any other A330s there. And we also can look just like what we did before by having a look at the wingspan of the A330. The wingspan of the A330 is apparently 60.3 meters. We'll just double check that on the Saudi Airlines website as well. So the wingspan for the A330-343 is 60.3 meters. So what we're going to look at is uh, both the wingspan for this one, it looks almost like 60.3 meters there. And that probably indicates maybe that we're looking at the same plane or same type of plane that would have pulled up in this bay here. It does say that this is the one that's on the tarmac here. And we can have a look for news articles about that. So if we have a look at HQ, HZAQ30, so this is our specific one, we can even copy that into this. And we can have a look and see if there's any news articles Simple Flying has identified this, a Saudi Airbus A330, damaged in Sudan conflict. And these are the aircraft that have been impacted by the conflict. We even have footage that's from the ground as well. So it gives us just a little bit more detail and really helps us verify that content 
by verifying what type of plane that might be, where it came from, and what airline it might have belonged to. So just from this satellite image alone, we've been able to tell that this plane specifically is a Saudi airline Airbus A330-343 and it flew in from Riyadh. So all of those details we're able to tell just from a simple satellite image and just being a little bit creative around using other sources of data such as aerial traffic to identify what's actually happened here. I hope you enjoyed this session about aerial traffic and aerial data. It's important to think about the way that this data can be fused with other traditional things that we've looked at like satellite imagery, like social media information and some of that content that you may see in the news, how that can be developed a little bit further with a keen, curious eye. I'll see you in the next session very soon.